Douglas Cooling and Heating, serving the Birmingham area for 38 years, 988-3706. That's Douglas. I'm James Spann. This is the morning edition of the Weather Extreme video. This is for Thursday, the 25th day of August. Again, around here, things are quiet, although we might see a few isolated uh, storms later this afternoon or tomorrow. Uh, prospects of widespread rain just not looking good. Of course, Irene is the big story, and let's get in there and talk about it and see if we can answer your questions about that storm and our weather. We'll start with the Skycam shots around the network early this morning, and as we almost always do, the uh, Skycam views first off coming from Inverness on top of the Wingate Inn overlooking Highway 280 at the insane hour of 5 a.m. Who's awake at this hour of the day? Not too many people. We'll check the Coleman Skycam. That's uh, U.S. Highway 278 down below the water treatment plant just east of downtown Coleman and go to uh, Columbus, Mississippi across the state line in Lowndes County and the sky there is mostly fair. Here's the water vapor satellite shot. Nice trough coming through the Great Lakes, pushing a cold front down this way. Uh, that front this morning is defined a little north of Indianapolis, down toward Tulsa and Oklahoma City. And let me tell you what, in the wake of that, it's nice and cool. Look at all those 50s up over the Midwest. Pretty sharp gradient near the front. Now, of course, obviously that you know real cool air won't make it down here, but we do think... By the time the weekend gets here, numbers will back down ever so slightly. Highs closer to 90 by Saturday and Sunday. It's been pretty hot around here lately. There's the uh, watch warning map this morning. And, of course, now we're starting to see the uh, uh, counties on the East Coast becoming illuminated there, including a hurricane watch for the Outer Banks of North Carolina as Irene begins to make the approach. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, convective outlook today, a slight risk of severe weather along that surface boundary over the northeast. And tomorrow, no formal risks around the nation. This is the rain for the next five days, valid through Monday evening of next week at 7 o'clock. And there's a little sliver here, and that would be for any isolated storms uh, today or tomorrow. But again, widespread rain not likely. Of course, the big numbers on the extreme upper part of the Atlantic coast. And uh, you can see that the uh, idea of a foot of rain just uh, offshore and maybe up toward Long Island. And uh, that, that will be one of the big threats with Irene for the Northeast. It's flooding. And again, just where it exactly makes landfall up there depends on uh, who gets how much rain. But obviously, uh, toward the end of the weekend, it's going to be pretty uh, windy and wet up there. All right, there's a look at the... Uh, Activity across the Atlantic Basin this morning. Of course, Irene is the big story. A, a weak wave in the central Atlantic not doing anything. And a new tropical depression in the eastern Atlantic. But first off, there's a look at uh, Irene. Major hurricane, top winds um, at 115 miles an hour, down a little bit from last night. Uh, moving northwest at 12. Seems to be a little shearing going on at this point, coming up across the Bahamas. There's the modeling on Irene. Pretty good consistency. Uh, the thing just kind of kisses the Outer Banks and uh, comes up into New England over the weekend. And again, that obviously is going to be uh, kind of windy and wet, especially for Boston and uh, the, the folks along and on the, the right side of the, of the track. And in terms of the intensity, this thing, uh, you know, aren't, in fact, no models show it now as a Category 4. Uh, most models keep it a major hurricane for about 48 hours, then begin to weaken it as it moves up into the cooler water. This will clearly not be a major hurricane coming up toward uh, New England. This will be a weakening hurricane and maybe even a tropical storm. But still, obviously, with the population density up there, it's going to be a problem with down trees and power lines. There's the official track from the Hurricane Center, and uh, they bring it as a... Uh, uh, category 2 into the Outer Banks Saturday night. And again, we have a hurricane watch up for that part of North Carolina. And then it comes up into uh, uh, the northeastern states as a tropical storm or a weak hurricane uh, Sunday night. And uh, again, uh, the greatest impact would be along into the right of that line. But uh, certainly for New York City and Long Island, you know, windy, wet, 
Uh, down trees and power lines, certainly a possibility. And that could knock out the power to a lot of folks up there and make for a very messy commute Monday morning. And we'll check the GFS here in a moment. There's our new tropical depression in the eastern Atlantic. And uh, if you notice, it's a little north of uh, 10 north. And uh, uh, the the models are very consistent. The track is consistent. This will be a north-northwest type moving storm that is no threat to land. Uh, it's going to get up in no man's land and uh, not make the journey across the big pond and threaten nobody. And, of course, if this gets a name, and it should, this will be Tropical Storm Jose. But it looks like that will not be an issue. Now let's take the GFS. This is the OZ run ballot at 7 o'clock this evening. Trough coming to the northeast, 594 heat across the plains. And uh, down below that, that weak surface front is north of us. And, again, it might kick off a storm somewhere today. You know, yesterday we had a storm in Tuscaloosa caused tree and power line damage up in the northern part of the county. The ones that form could pack a punch, but again, there's not going to be that many out there. And uh, Irene is east of Fort Lauderdale. Uh, tomorrow, the front stalls, fizzles out. Again, chance of a shower just tiny. Irene makes the north turn. Just look at Saturday, and Irene is, uh, again, almost sitting on the outer banks. We'll check the uh, RPM Saturday evening. Uh, th th this is uh, Saturday night at uh, midnight, and again, it's a higher resolution look, and the RPM has it uh, just east of the Outer Banks. And of course, in this kind of situation, the onshore flow is going to be on the top of that thing coming over toward Virginia Beach and the Tidewater, and you know, the exact track will determine how much of an issue we have there, but clearly, you know, it's going to be a lot of wind and rain for the Outer Banks, and we'll just have to see how it goes. We'll go to... Uh, Sunday evening, this is Sunday evening at uh, 7 o'clock Central, 8 o'clock Eastern. And uh, boy, the thing's coming right in there toward uh, uh, New York City. And again, at this phase, it will be a weak hurricane or a tropical storm. And I think the main threat up there is going to be power outages with down trees and lines. Uh, this will not be the kind of thing that's going to cause a whole lot of structural damage. But power outages, yes, could be widespread. A lot of trees go down and... Uh, uh, obviously, that's going to make for a really nasty commute uh, Monday morning of next week. And Monday evening, uh, there's the big picture, troughing over the northeast. Uh, Irene is up in the Canadian Maritimes and fading, and we're just dry as a bone. Our weekend here, of course, will be you know rain-free. Uh, highs will be noticeably cooler. In fact, the latest guidance coming in with highs only in the upper 80s on Sunday and Monday, and I think that's right. As Irene pulls down cooler and drier air, and Monday morning, we could be down there in the low 60s and maybe 50s for North Alabama. We'll start to trend the numbers downward in the forecast, and that sounds pretty good. Now, there's Tuesday. Still looks dry. Wednesday, moisture tries to return, and a week from today, evidence maybe of a few scattered showers or storms, but again, not the widespread rain we need. We'll check the end of the forecast, September 9th. I still can't see a setup there for cool air you know you start saying that word september you just start looking for that first good cool front of the fall season that's not going to happen with that in fact there's a tropical system showing up down there in the caribbean and of course we all know you know that might probably will vanish on the next run but that is certainly in the core of the hurricane season and something we always have to watch this time of the year that's it for the weather extreme video today we'll have notes on the blog the next video here by 3 30 or so today and if you're local to us if you live around here we invite you to watch us on television this evening abc 3340 in birmingham at 5 6 and 10 thanks for watching have a great day and god bless being alabama's news leader means digging deeper to get you the facts working harder so you have all sides of the story and not being afraid to tell the truth every day you award us by making abc 3340 alabama's most watched news and now the associated press has named us alabama's most outstanding news operation that's nine times since 1996 more than all other stations combined and that's nine more reasons you should trust the news leader abc 3340